Well, good morning. It's good to see you in the Lord's house this morning. If you're glad you're here, say amen. amen. It's always good to have be in the Lord's house. What a wonderful blessing. I, I praise the Lord for Sunday. I didn't have to go to church this morning. I got to go. Amen. I got to come. That's a blessing. So we're so glad that you're with us this morning. We're glad to have our visitors with us. Thank you for coming and being part of our service. And hope you'll just pray that the Lord just bless us and give us a great time in his house. Pray you'll speak to hearts and move in lives. Any lost folk, pray they'll be saved. And listen, let me just say this. I believe every child of God needs some help every time we come in. So let's pray that we'll get what we need this morning from the preaching of his word and the worship hour. And pray the Lord just bless as only he can. Pray for our, the request. We have a lot of folk that are sick. Uh, we have some that are bad, the folk that are battling cancer. Pray for Brother Rick Hatchett. He begins his uh, radiation and chemotherapy treatments um, this week. So pray for him. Pray for Brother Rufus Stewart. Uh, he's still out. He has cancer. And He'll be taking uh, chemo treatments and radiation treatments also sometimes in the near future. Uh, continue to pray for those in bereavement. Pray for Sister Norma Cox, his family. Her mother was buried this past week, lived to be at the age of 99 years old, and went home to be with the Lord. So pray for the Cox family and the Stevens family, and Lord, would just bless and meet the needs of each and every one of them. Pray for Brother and uh, Sister Frank Bailey. Brother Frank's got to where he just about can't go. Uh, he's having a lot of problems with his balance, and... So pray for him, pray for Brother Jimmy Smith and, and Dizzy, pray for Miss Thelma Noblet. She'll be having surgery about two, in about two weeks, so keep her in your prayers. And uh, so many other people, we've just had a lot of sickness come through the church. And when that's not all of them, and I don't leave anybody out intentionally, but the Lord knows the need. So let's stand, if you would, please, and we'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And we'll uh, ask the Lord's blessing to be upon the service, the request. And pray that his will be done concerning each and everything that we do and say for the Lord's house. Brother Danny Henry, you pray for us, please. Amen. Remain standing, if you would, please. Turn your hymn books, page number 95. Page number 95, kneel at the cross. That's where we should be today, is at the foot of the cross. We'll sing the first and the last verse, page number 95. Congregation may be seated. Choir remains standing, please. I'm glad we can kneel at the cross. 
Leave all of our cares and all of our troubles there. As Christians, we should take that cross and we should bear it to others so that they may come and kneel at the cross as well. One thing I never want to be accused of is hiding the cross of Jesus Christ. That's our number one goal, should be to bring others to that cross. And we should not have to ever regret a time where we hid the cross. The cross of Calvary, that lonely hill where Jesus died that day. They would see his thorn crowned head, they would see the blood he shed.
as she looks down the lane. She sees someone coming and they're calling his name. Son of David, Messiah, I heard someone call him the healer. Many conceal her. Her heart beat so fast as he came into sight. Her emotions were filled with both joy and with fright. She let him pass by, but not out of reach. As she touched his garment, he turned to speak. Someone's been healed today, let a miracle pass your way, you touch my clothes, you now are made whole, step forward and claim, your faith has pulled you through, your A miracle, Jesus is passing your way. God's in the business and does the impossible, sending out blessings each day. You can be healed today. Let a miracle pass your way. Reach down to Jesus. passed my way one day, touched me and made me whole, amen. No matter what we might be going through, what we might be facing, if we just reach out to him this morning, he'll heal us. He'll make us whole, amen. So often we go through life and we, we worry about these small things that, that we might be facing, these things we might be going through. And we wonder, what am I going to do? Where am I going to turn? Well, if we just turn to him this morning, if we just realize that all those things that we're facing, all those battles we might be fighting, He's already won for us. Yeah, it's already be, been finished years ago on Calvary.
Amen. I'm glad for that day. He finished our fight. He finished our battle. All at Calvary. If you'd stand, please. Turn your hymn books. Page number 67 at Calvary. We'll sing the first, the second, and the last verse. Page number 67. The choir will be excused on the first verse. I spit in penalty and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was seated. I'm glad it was at Calvary. No other place will do it for you this morning. If you're depending on something else, you got bad news. You're not going to get there. Only by his blood and only for the blood shed on Calvary's cross. Amen. Okay, our brother Mike's going to come at this time and sing for us this morning. Pray for him as he's coming. The Lord will use him. The song will be a blessing to our hearts. Thank God for saving me song I sing, going to sing, you hear my daddy sing it all the time, he's in the house, he's in the house, I worked with a, 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 a lady a while back, and, and, and uh, she told me uh, something about being possessed by the devil, and I was talking about that, and she said, well, the devil cannot reside where the Lord resides, so he can't, I cannot be possessed by a devil because he resides in me, and I thought that was good, I really did, I said, that makes sense. So just listen to the words of the song. I don't sing it like Daddy does, but I, I'll, I'll give it my best. A little girl was lying there. The people all were weeping. They just laughed at Jesus when he said she's only sleepy. Then he took her by the hand and she began to live again. Some began to praise the Lord. Some began to say, He's in the house. If Now there is light where dark 
darkness used to be now there is hope there's no more doubt praise his name he's in the house i was like that little girl didn't know my sin till Jesus touched this heart of mine and he gave me life again I am just a house of clay and ever since that happy day there's a light that shines in me for all the world to say, preacher, how you know he's here? Well, I brought him one way, and I feel his presence. Well, there's just a wonderful thing about being in the house of God and feel the presence of his, of his being there. Amen? God will begin to move and touch and move in lives and like we've never seen it before if we'll let the Lord have his way this morning. And I praise the Lord for the privilege that we have to be here and to have our visitors with us and have some we haven't seen in a while. Have you here in the Lord's house? That's, that's extremely encouraging and such a blessing. And we just thank you so much for coming and being here this morning and being a part of the service at Emmanuel Baptist Church. We don't take it for granted that you're here. You could have went anywhere, but you chose to come here. And I think you came to the best church around. Amen. I always said a church alive is worth a drive. So uh, sometimes we have to tell our people that. Some of them come a long distance and it'll come a long way. But uh, we just appreciate them making their way to the house of God, being in the presence of the Lord and just allowing the Lord to work and move in our lives. What a blessing, amen. amen. If you're glad you're here this morning, once again, say a good amen. amen. I tell you right now, I think we ought to make the devil mad every change we get. I'm mad at him already this morning. I, ain't, I don't like him. I don't know where y'all like him or not, but I don't like him. And Brother Mike says he can't be possessed by the devil. I'm going to ask Rachel after service about that. Uh, that's his wife. <laughs> but anyway, isn't it good to know that, hey, I'm glad we're his, amen. And uh, nothing in the world, the devil can do anything about it. I'm glad I'm saved forever throughout eternity. Been saved over 50 years, but folks, I'll tell you, it's going to last a whole lot longer than that. And I'm glad we're heaven, heaven bound with a hammer down, as old Mays Jackson used to say on the radio. Well, it's good to see you. What a blessing. And we sure miss our people. It's not able to be here because of sickness, but we would encourage you to pray for them, as we mentioned a moment ago. And looking forward to the service this morning. We're glad to have Brother uh, Tony and Dee Smith with us uh, uh, this morning. Brother Tony will be ministering to us in a few minutes, and Sister Dee's going to be singing uh, some songs for us, and we're looking forward to that. We met them at a fellowship meeting a few months back over at Tabernacle Baptist Church at the Piedmont Baptist Fellowship. So we're glad our paths crossed and glad they can be with us today. And with that in mind, tomorrow will be the Piedmont Baptist Fellowship. It will be at uh, the Beacon Baptist Church down in Lexington, South Carolina, where the pastor is Joshua Lawson. Brother uh, Caldwell just recently uh, retired and, and resigned the pulpit there, and Brother Joshua has taken over, a new pastor, only 24 years old, uh, so you pray for him, and he asked that we pray for him yesterday when he called, and we told him we'd be praying for him, he said, I'm scared to death, this is the first fellowship meeting I've ever hosted, I said, nothing to it, just stand up and call on somebody to preach, that's all you got to do, and have a good meal afterwards, amen, but uh, anyway, we're looking forward to going, if you would like to go to the fellowship meeting in the morning, 
But we're going to leave here at 1130, 1130 sharp. We'll be leaving uh, down uh, to go down to lecture. And so if you want to go with us, you're welcome to go, okay? Let me say this morning that the flowers we have here in the church were placed here today by Brother Jack Stevens in honor of his wife's birthday, Frankie. And so we appreciate the beautiful flowers that are here. And uh, so thank you so much, Brother Jack. All right, let's have the ushers to come forward, receive our offering this morning. And you give as given unto the Lord. And I know the Lord will bless you and faithfulness of your giving. We'll give Brother Tony just as much time as we can uh, this morning to share with us what the Lord has laid upon his heart and has for us this morning. So it's always a blessing to come and just hear the man of God proclaim this blessed word. Amen. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in word of prayer and ask the Lord blessing upon the service, also upon the gift and the giver and the offering. Brother Bill Noblin, if you'd pray for us, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. Granted, our Father. Yes. Oh, Lord, give him the power. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bill. for the blood of the crucified one. Praise the Lord. Bless you. God bless these little youngins. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for them. Let me make a couple of more announcements before Brother uh, Tony comes and his wife comes. Uh, don't forget, um, uh, next Sunday, of course, is Easter Sunday. And uh, we're looking forward to our Easter Sunday services uh, to begin with at 7 a.m. Yes, that's a.m. 7 o'clock does come uh, twice on Sundays, a.m. and p.m. So 7 o'clock next Sunday morning, real early, weather permitting, we will be having our uh, sunrise service in the prayer garden. 
So we encourage you to come, invite your neighbors, friends, community to come and be with us, and we'll look forward to that. Lord's willing, we'll have some donuts and coffee, maybe some hot chocolate down there. Uh, I hope it won't be cold enough for coffee and hot chocolate. I hope it's warm. But anyway, we'll, be, we'll have that for you uh, if you'll get there early enough to partake of that. So don't forget that. And I would like to say also, well, I praise the Lord today that little Max got well <laughs> and went home, amen, from the hospital. And uh, thank God for that. A little fella, two years old, already had two very serious surgeries uh, in just a short period, less than about four months apart. And, uh, boy, I thank God for watching over him and touching him and getting him well and getting him home. And I'm looking forward to that little curly head come up here and drop some money in the jug. Amen. I, I love our kids. I appreciate them so much. And so you continue to pray for Max as he's at home recovering. Maybe he'll get to be with us on Easter Sunday. So don't forget the sunrise service. And then immediately following the sunrise service, we'll have a breakfast in the fellowship hall. That's for all who comes. And we'll, uh, well, if they don't come, definitely not going to eat. But anyway, for all that are here, we'll have enough prepared for everybody. But uh, that'll be in the fellowship hall, and everybody will be welcome to partake of that and enjoy that. It'll be a full breakfast, and uh, so you make sure to come and plan to stay with us for breakfast. And then we'll not have Sunday school that morning, but we will have our, our morning service, and it will start, of course, as always, at 1030. So we're looking forward to our Easter services and just so excited about what the Lord's going to do for us. I, I, I love Easter. Easter is my favorite uh, time of the year, Easter and Christmas. And let me just say, that's not the only time I come to church either. Amen. <laughs> I try to come all them other uh, 50, uh, 49 Sundays in, in the year and try to be in the Lord's house. So we're looking forward to that. Let me just say, there may be some, you say, well, some people just go to church on Easter and Christmas. Well, thank God, at least they come. If they come one time, they get, hey, they get the gospel. It, it, it could cause, cause them to come every service if you get right with the Lord. Amen. And I believe God's still in the business of getting people right. So we're excited about whoever might come next Sunday, visitors, first time visitors, first time people in the church. It don't matter. I'm just glad to have them. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. So uh, is there anything else I need to mention? I do want to mention our revival that will begin next month. Uh, Brother Brent Carr will be with us uh, preaching for us that week beginning on the 22nd and going through the 27th. That will be on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then Monday through Friday. Our times of our revival services will be the regular time on Sunday. And then, of course, during the week, our revival services will start at 7 p.m. So we want you to plan to come. Brother Brother Brent Carr, a, a powerful preacher. He, he's crazy, but he's a powerful preacher. Now, he preaches. He don't beat around the bush. He's a little bitty fire plug. If you can believe it or not, he's even a little bit shorter than I am. I can call him shorty. So we're looking for Brother Brent to be with us, and you come praying. And I, I, I don't want a meeting. I don't want just a series of meetings, folks. I want us to feel and experience a Holy Ghost, God sent, sin killing, a good Holy Ghost stirring of the, of, of the people of God in a revival service. I want us to see a difference in our people when this revival service is closed out and in. And I want our people, please support the revival meeting. Now, listen, it's daylight saving time now. And most of the time you can get to church at 7 o'clock and still get home before it gets dark much. And I'm hoping that you'll try to come and be with us. And we're excited about that and praise the Lord. Don't forget, this coming Saturday, we'll be having our Easter uh, luncheon with the church and the kids they'll be here they'll have some of you's already brought some of those plastic eggs filled with candy thank you for doing that some of the rest of you if you could do that that'd be a blessing we'll have those for the kids they'll hide those in different age groups we'll have a big luncheon you bring a covered dish the church is going to furnish the chicken and we'll probably do a ham so we'll just have a good time amen looking forward to it what oh we're going to have a bouncy house Whoopee. <laughs> and a slide. A double whoopee. But we are, for the kids, they're going to be a bouncy house and a slide. They'll be set up here on the property. They'll be setting those up on Saturday morning. So uh, just come. You don't, have to be, you don't have to be a young person to come. If you, hey, any, the, age, the age is 1 to 101. Okay? So I think I'd cover everybody here. If you're able to come. If you want to slide down the slide at 101, help yourself. My son showed me, uh, showed my wife a, um, a video uh, Friday night of a, uh, a man that was 100 years old that was running a 100-meter race. 100 year, I just hope I can crawl at 100 if I get that far. But he run a race, a 100-meter race, and he smoked the rest of the crowd. Of course, I think the rest of them was about his age group, but still, that's pretty good, amen. Uh, so, uh, that's, so you, hey, if you got it, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So keep active as long as you can, okay? All right, I think I've covered just about everything. Don't forget the night service, of course, at seven, uh, 6 o'clock. In choir practice, Jamie, at 5? 
quarter to five. So those of you in the choir, let me encourage you to come be with us and help us. And then let me just share this blessing with you. I already got two nice cards this morning, and I do thank the Lord for that. We got a nice card here from Sister uh, Norma. Uh, it's to the church. It says, Dear Church Family, during such a difficult time, and your kindness meant so much, and your thoughtfulness was really touching. Thank you for all your prayers, your sympathy, your caring, and for the beautiful flowers, Norma Cox and family. So keep Miss Norma and her family in your prayers. Have her mother went home to be with the Lord at the age of 99. And then we want to pray for Miss Faye Bailey's mother, who will turn 101 uh, this coming Wednesday. She is uh, getting real low, and her health is getting uh, real low. So you pray for her, if you would, please, and the Lord will bless her. And then I have another blessing this morning. I got a, I got a card that I received and, uh, this morning that, I, that I, it's on my desk, and I do appreciate those cards. They're, they really are encouraging. Like I told you on Wednesday night, I don't know if anybody had any trouble with the devil Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning, but, uh, you know, you shouldn't have because he was busy on me. Uh, but uh, I thank the Lord for the encouragement uh, that you get from along the way. What a blessing that is. And then we had a, a couple in our church this morning came. We're working on our building out uh, back and trying to get it done. We got the wiring run. We got, all we got to do is get it put into the meter base here and get it hooked up in there. And then the wire's got to take place in that building. But uh, Brother Jerry and Sister Martha Armstrong came this morning and gave me a check for $1,000 and said, Preacher, we want to buy one of those air conditioning units. <laughs> That's one. We need four. Can you do the math? If anybody else wants to help, they sent that out as a challenge. If you want to help to buy the other, four, other three units, that'd be a blessing. That'd be a real blessing. It sure would. God's been good to us, and it's progressing well. Hopefully, before too long, we'll be able to use that building, and the kids will be able to get in there and enjoy it also. We're really excited about that. I can't hear you, hon. just go to the Lord right now. We'll go to the Lord with prayer right now. Pray for that young person. Pray God will deal with her heart and remove her life and get her back where she needs to be with the Lord. I'm telling you, young people, this world is not anything to fool around with. It's not anything to fool around with. So we have to be real, you have to be real careful what you, how you approach and what you do and who you run around with. And, and let me just say this, mom and dad. Now, brother Tony's going to preach. But let me just say this, mom and dad and grandparents. You can't let them do what they want to do. You can't let them do what they want to do. That's where we're getting all the problems that we're in. That's why our, some of our churches in the mess today that they're in is because we've allowed the devil to come in and allow people to do some of the things that they want to do, and God's not in a thousand miles of it. That's right. Amen. That's reading a lot of them don't ever don't use this King James Bible. A lot of them don't adhere to the principles and the standards that are listed in this book that we're to go by. Amen. I am thank God we still have some standards. We still have some principles around here. And we're not going to change them for you. We're not going to change them for nobody else. Hey, hey, they're based on the authority of this book. And that's just the way it's going to be. Amen. As long as we stay true to this book, we're going to be all right. Brother, brother um, Mark, please. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. So glad Max is doing well. All right, let's go to the Lord in word of prayer. And let's have a word of prayer right now and pray for Angel. Call her name out. Call her name. You say, well, God knows who she is. I know he does, but let's call her name out. Ask God to work in that young lady's life and get her where she needs to be with him, more importantly, and get her back in the Lord's house where she needs to be. Let's pray. Our Father, we love you today. We already thank you for the good spirit that we feel in this place and amongst your people. And Lord, we realize today that you're the God of all gods. God, you're the God that can do anything that you want to do without asking permission or asking authority from anybody or any person or any, uh, any organization. Lord, we're glad today that we serve a God that's able, a God that's powerful, a God, Lord, that's always ready to hear and answer our prayer and already, always ready to meet our needs. And, Father, as we come this morning, we pray on behalf of Angel. Lord, we lift her up to you this morning that you'll touch that young lady's heart. 
Lord, how I pray that you'll deal with her and work in her life and help her to realize, Lord, that there's nothing out in this world, Lord, that's offered, and, 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 and there's nothing out in the world that's going to be good for her. And, Lord, I pray that you'll remind her of what she's heard from this very church, the many times that she's heard the gospel preached, the many times that she's heard it proclaimed, the many times, Father, she's been in this church and been in these services and heard the word of God. And you tell us, Father, in your word that your word will not return void, but, Father, will accomplish that which forth it's sent forward. And, Lord, we pray that you'll deal with her right now. Remind her, Father, of the words, of the, of the words, Lord, that you spoke through your word. And, God, help her today to come back to where she needs to be. Father, as a prodigal, Lord, I pray that you'll bring her back. Father, help her to see. Father, I pray she'll come to herself. As the prodigal in the Bible says that he came to himself and he realized what the world had done to him. And, Father, what the world didn't do for him and how that the world just stood him out to kill him and to destroy him. So, Lord, I pray that you'll speak to Angel right now, work in her life and deal with her and speak to her. Lord, it's only you can. I pray that you'll give this sister and this grandmother, Lord, peace. And, Father, realize that, Lord, that you're going to bring her back. And, God, just do that, I pray, that you're only able to do. I pray, Father, for these other young people in this congregation. Lord, they're precious. And, Father, they're valuable to the work. They're valuable to the ministry. And, Lord, we love them and we appreciate them. But, Lord, we know what they're going through. We know what they're facing out in this world. But, God, how we pray that every one of the young people in this church will keep their eyes focused upon the Lord Jesus Christ and, Father, not get involved with the things of this world and the people of this world, but, Lord, they live for you and serve you. Bless and protect them and watch over them. Lord, give, the, give the, uh, the, the parents and the grandparents and those others that are around them, Lord, give them the authority that they, that they will uh, usher upon them, that they'll do, Father, what they should do according to the word of God. Help them, Lord, just not to have their way. But, Lord, I pray they'll be in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless them, I pray. Touch angel right now and deal in their life. And, Lord, we'll thank you for everything that you do. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank you all. Y'all pray for her on a constant basis. Brother Tony, you come at this time and share with us what the Lord's laid upon your heart. And pray to God to just bless you in a mighty and a strong appreciate way. That. Appreciate that's you being here. Okay. He's going to do the, D he gonna do the D DVD first. Little as much when God is in. Thank y'all so much. That's a blessing. Amen. Thank y'all so much. May the Lord send the rest of it in. He can, amen. amen. Okay, Brother Tony. I'm Brother Tony Smith, and this is my wife, Deanne, and we're with Victory Baptist Press. And uh, last year, after uh, being in the ministry several years in a stable place, uh, God began to stir our nest and challenge us. And Basically, we sold what we had, bought some motor home, and yoked up with Victory Baptist Press. Now, I know you're familiar with Victory Baptist Press because you've got some of our John and Romans out there on your table. And uh, we do print John and Romans for ministries as well as full Bibles. And we've been doing that for about 34 years, the ministry has. And so uh, we do it free of charge. We don't charge any for that. And thus, you need uh, different ones like Brother Richburg or, uh, and his wife and Dee and I on the road. We raise support for paper. We don't make any bones about it. We need help. And uh, we're trying to get paper uh, sold. Uh, people can purchase that, different roles. Uh, Talking about this offering just a few minutes ago, I was in a missions conference about two weeks ago in New Iberia, Louisiana. And one of the missionaries, a young a man and his wife, and they had two small babies, they're going to the mission field. He came up to me after the uh, conference and he said, uh, how much is a roll of that paper? And that paper is about this big. You'll see it on the video, about this tall. It'll print about 500 Bibles or else 13,000 John and Romans. And I told him the price. That missionary reached in his pocket and wrote a check. And he's trying to raise support to go to the mission field. And boy, I tell you, that sure did encourage me. See, this young man is sowing seed uh, to get this word of God out. That's what God's called us to do. Uh, provide seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And uh, my wife's going to come and sing after the video. And I'll say something about her song. But right now, let's just watch this video. For Tony and Dee Smith, Phil Reps for Victory Baptist Press and Ministry of the Victory Baptist Church in Milton, Florida. 
Our church has been printing and distributing whole Bibles and scripture portions since 1984. We believe that God has called us to be a part of helping to provide seed to the sower and bread to the eater, Isaiah 55, 10. Dee and I were married in 1983, and throughout the years, God gave us four children. Those children were saved and have grown up and have left the nest and now are married and have given us 12 grandchildren. They are faithfully serving the Lord in their local churches throughout the country. In 1981, when God called me to preach, I went into evangelism. Afterwards, God permitted me to be able to pastor for over 24 years. During that time, I was able to also teach in three different Bible colleges in our country. Now God has called us to the Victory Baptist Church and Victory Baptist Press in Milton, Florida, where Tim Fuller has been the pastor there for 23 years. Victory Baptist Press is the second largest church scripture printing ministry in the nation. Since 1984, we've printed in 11 languages to 18 nations in 50 states distributing 7,830,000 scriptures. I'm Jim Fallour, the director of the Victory Baptist Press here in Milton, Florida. In a moment, we're gonna give you a demonstration about how our workers can take perfectly clean paper and turn it into the printed Word of God. When it's determined that we're gonna print a Bible or a Bible portion in any particular language, we first have to have that keyed into a computer. From the computer is sent to a filmmaker and the negatives are produced. The negatives are then pasted up on a masking sheet. The masking sheet is used to burn that text into a metal plate. The metal plates are then installed on our big web press and prints on both sides of the paper as it comes off the big roll. It then goes through a slitter, a cutter, a folder, it comes out the other end of the press in the form of a 32-page booklet called a signature. If we're doing complete Bibles, it takes 34 signatures for each Bible produced. If we're doing New Testaments, it takes 10 signatures for each New Testament produced. And now let's watch the big press in actual operation. The next phase of the operation in completing a complete Bible is printing covers. Now this is a vinyl cover that will go on one of the Spanish Bibles that we're printing currently. But first of all, it has to have the name of the Bible imprinted on it. Like this gold imprint that you see that says Santa Biblia. That's for the Spanish Bible. Now this little press is an old, old press made in Germany in 1950, but it's amazing. What a fabulous job it does. I think this might be the quietest running piece of equipment that we have in our shop. Me and the press have something in common. We're both getting old, but it still does a great job. We're now ready for the final phase of the production of a complete Bible or of a New Testament. In this 12 pocket collating system, the pages are put in proper order. They then go around this circular part of the machine, have the covers glued to the back of them, and then go through this three blade trimmer and have the outside edges trimmed and then they're boxed and ready to be shipped to a mission field somewhere around the world. The book of John and the book of Romans is by far the most popular item that we have ever printed at Victory Baptist Press. This machine takes two signatures which completes the John and Romans and the cover, puts them together, stitches or staples it on the back side trims the three outer edges, and brings out the other end in the completed product. This has been a great tool for mass evangelism, no telling how many countries around the world. The video that you have just watched was originally produced uh, several years ago. And since that time, we've been able to make several changes in the print shop. Uh, we've updated some equipment, 
added a two color and a four color sheet fed press. I just installed a packer box on the big web press. What has not changed is the process and the product. Still printing Bibles, sending them to missionaries around the world. We're grateful for what the Lord has given us. Every piece of equipment in the print shop is in good working condition. Uh, we have a group of dedicated workers who come to work at 7 o'clock every morning and work hard every day. Uh, we've got a group of uh, supporters around the country who uh, financially support the ministry and make what we do possible. For over 30 years, we've been able to print these Bibles and have never had to make a charge for any of them. We do major projects every year, but we have the capacity in the print shop to do so much more. And that's where we need your help. We need financial support now more than ever because the need and the demand is so great. Where could you invest your money into a more worthy project than sending the Word of God to places where there is none? That's what we do, and you can help us. We need you to become partners with us, and together we can do so much more. The approximate price to print and deliver a complete Bible to the mission field is about $2.50. The approximate price to print and deliver a John Romans to the mission field is $0.50. Cents. The approximate price to purchase a roll of paper that can print 13,000 John Romans is $1,150. What portion might God have you to be a part of in distributing Bibles throughout the world? How can you help? Support Victory Baptist Press monthly through your church missions program with prayer and finances. How can you help? Give to one of our special printing projects. Yearly, we are involved in two or three major projects throughout the world and always have need for money there. How can you help? Take on the Smiths as they raise support for Bibles. Dee and I are fully invested in this, and we're on the road full-time raising support for paper for this great ministry. What a joy it is to see seed given to the sower and bread to the eater. Solomon said, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what shall be on the earth. Would you consider supporting Tony and Dee Smith as field reps for Victory Baptist Press as we provide the seed to the sower and bread to the eater? Amen. This year, we, uh, God willing, helping us with this. Our goal is to uh, print over a million Bibles before the year's over with. We're finishing uh, last year up. We sent out 400,000 John and Romans to Zimbabwe, 12,000 John and Romans to the Swabwano language, and we're about to finish up 400,000 Bibles, whole Bibles, to South America. Boy, God's been good. I'm going to ask my wife to come now. She's going to sing a song for you, and then in a minute we'll have the message. I um, want to tell you a little bit about this. God has called us to be a part of providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And we're excited about that and the printing of the Word of God. My wife and I have a rich heritage. She's from uh, farmlands of Tennessee, and uh, her family was basically sharecroppers. And I don't know if many of you know what that is, but I'm sure some of you do. What it was, a sharecropper was given so much seed, and he usually farmed somebody else's land. And what he did with that seed determined the future of his family. And her family was sharecroppers, and her daddy was a sharecropper, and he ended up getting saved. He became a preacher. Long story short, eight uh, years ago, this past week, in fact, he was in a pulpit in Memphis, Tennessee, preaching. And in the middle of that pulpit, he had a stroke. And on the message, he says something about he's going blind and he cannot see. But after he got, he went on and finished the message. And when he got through preaching, he stepped down and led a man to the Lord. And then he collapsed, later died. That man went on to Bible college and is now on the mission field. What a way to go out, I tell you what. Well, we could not help but when Dee Dee just recently recorded this CD about two weeks ago, uh, we put a song on there called Sharecropper Seed. The excerpt you will hear is her daddy in that last message 
at the start of this telling about the power of the gospel.
Well, I apologize. It was my bad. I gave him the wrong copy, and that excerpt wasn't on there. But it is on the CD, so I guess you need to buy the CD from us when it comes out. Amen. It'll be out in a couple of weeks. And uh, anyway, thank you, Pastor, for letting us be here this morning. Take your Bible with me, please, and turn to Ecclesiastes chapter number 8. Ecclesiastes chapter number 8. I appreciate my Bible this morning. I'm sure thankful for it. I've been a few places of the world that I've seen people that have never even gazed upon a copy of the Word of God. And I know that's kind of hard for us to perhaps comprehend, but there are places still like that in the world. And why should I have so many copies of the Bible and nobody else have one? And uh, certainly everybody deserves to, to be able to hold Holy Writ uh, and, and read it, if I do. None of us really deserve it, but God's a gracious God. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that this morning. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 1. Who is as the wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight, stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What? doest thou. We'll be talking to you mainly about verse number four, where the word of the king is, there is power. Our Father in heaven, oh God, how much I need your power. Uh, Lord, I'm just a mortal man. I have no ability to touch a soul. I have nothing, but I have thy word, and thy word has power in it, and you've exalted your word above your name. And I yield to you and desire to be fully controlled by the Holy Ghost. I pray you possess me now for a few minutes, Lord, that you may be magnified and your word will be exalted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Where the word of the king is, there is power. In Solomon's day, a king, uh, his, power, his word had a vast amount of power in it. It was the final say. If a king said it was going to be, it was so. Nobody could veto it. Nobody would vote on it. In fact, the king's wrath, the Bible said, is as a roaring of a lion. If a king was a good king, the Bible teaches us and states that the king that sitteth in the throne of judgment could scatter away all evil with his eyes. While he could just order something with his eyes and, and then speak it and it would be done. If he was a mean king, in the Bible you'll find his servants were noth nothing but slaves. And by the way, I'm thankful we still live in a democratic society that, in, in America today that just, you know, some politician can't say it's going to be and it's going to be. But that's not the way it was in the days of these monarchies. When a king ruled, uh, his word had absolute power and authority. And I will remind you, if you hold an old King James Bible there in front of you this morning, you hold the word of a king. And where the word of a king is, there's no doubt power. It has the final authority, and it has the final authority and power to work. And I appreciate and love my Bible because it's been such a blessing to my life. I look at this Bible and I realize it has the power to excite our awe. You know, when we're so small in his sight and this book, as we read it and study it, it has the ability to make us stand back and go, wow. I mean, the Bible tells us that we are like grasshoppers on this earth, and he sits upon the circle of the earth, and uh, we're like those inhabitants, like grasshoppers, and uh, we're so small. And you think about us as individuals, we're just vapors. We, we appear for a little time, and then we vanish away. We're like the flower of the field, and, and yet we boast so big with what we say we are, what we're going to do. We talk so proudly. I've always said we Baptists, we can strut sitting down, can't we? And uh, we're proud of who we are, and we think that we can will and say something. But the truth of the matter is, we're just breath. And uh, we don't have the power to summons anything. But the kings of the east, when you study the Bible, they, they had death and life was in the power of their tongue. I mean, in Daniel's day, the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and they cast him into the den of lions. In another place, into the, into the fiery furnace. And nobody stood up and got him a lawyer. Nobody appealed. Nobody stopped it. The word of the king is, there's power. In the day of old Solomon, there was old Joab. And he got out of line. And Solomon looked at old ben and and commanded him to go down to the altars and grab Joab. And he did. And as faithful as Joab had been, he took Joab's life. 
And then another time there's old Shimei that cursed old David in the Old Testament. The Bible says that Solomon told, told Benaniah again, the son of Jehoiada, you go down there and you slay him. And he fell upon him and he died. And nobody took Solomon from his kingdom. Whatever he said would be. Well, there was one time they even brought a, two women and a baby to him. And, and Solomon, if he would have said, go on and cut that baby in half, they would have done it. Nobody would have stopped him. Because where the word of a king is, there's power. In the Old Testament, the book of Exodus and Pharaoh's day, if he ordered the babies to be killed, they were killed. In Herod's day, if he ordered the babies to be killed during the time of the birth of Christ, they were killed. If it was in David's day and he'd order Uriah to the forefront of the battle, as good as though Uriah was, he's put up there and his life was taken. If a king said, bring me the head of a Baptist on a charger, they'd bring the pro most prolific pa preacher of the day in and remove his head because where the king spoke, a divine sentence was in the lips of the king. And when he spake, bless God, it was done. But our word of the king that we preach from and we study here this morning, it's important that it has the power to excite our all. When I stop and think about creation and, and, and the world that God made, and man, I tell you, imagine a world before there was no days. And one day God said, let there be. And so forth there began to be just by the mere word of God. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And man, when I go to the oceans or when I go to the mountains and when I see the beauty such as we've seen in South Carolina and North Carolina in recent days, I have to say, wow, what a powerful God we have that could speak such beauties into creation. And by the way, I want to remind you, if you're saved here this morning, you got saved by the word of God. We're born again, not of corruptible seed, but by incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And the same God that spoke this world into creation, one day he looked upon you and I, and under the preaching of his word, the word of a king said, let there be light. And light came into our soul, and we were born again, and we were saved, and he created in us a new creature. Man, I look at myself, I'm not what I used to be, and I'm not what I should be, but I can tell you this, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. How? By the word of God, God spoke, and you and I were created, and we were saved. He has the ability to create, but he also has the ability with his word, and I stand in all of that, to cessate things. He has the ability to say, I want it to stop. I mean, if God were to order it just one word and he could stop a life or he could change creation. If it's a kingdom, he could order it to rise or he could order it to fall. Upon his uh, command, leaders will be placed into position. Earth and America may say we want Hillary. He says, I want Trump. <laughs> uh, God can with his word do what he wants. He can bring uh, cities in under fire and brimstone. He can cause uh, the world to suffer a deluge of a worldwide flood and to uh, uh, come to cease in its existence. He can cause men to lay in piles uh, uh, on the battlefield if he orders it. To, he can cessate because he's God and that's what his word can do. Man, when I think about the latter times of the Bible and what it says all has to happen, I stop and think about all the Middle Eastern folks lining up with what the Word of God says. And I think, well, how can that be so? But let me tell you something. When God says it'll be so, it'll be so. And there will come a day when men will learn war no more. And they'll beat their swords into plowshares. And everything that John said that he saw on the Isle of Patmos... And everything that Daniel prophesied would be of the Antichrist in the last day. Even so, amen and amen. Everything that God's ever said that'll start or it'll stop, it is going to happen. Because where the word of a king is, there's power. I look at this book and the more I study it throughout the years, I'm humbled by its authority. I'm humbled by its power. It has the power to excite and to thrill me to say, wow, I got the greatest book in my possession ever been held by man. It's the word of Almighty God. And I believe God's preserved it. That's why I appreciate my Bible. It has the power to excite my all, but it has the power also to encourage my obedience. It sure helps me uh, to obey because I got a problem I don't always want to obey. 
To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. And whenever God gives us a command or something He wants and expects for us to do, we may struggle with it, but God's Word has the power to encourage us to obey God. God says give, and we say, I don't want to do it. But His Word says give, and it will be given again unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. And with the same measure that you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Wow, that encouraged me to say, I think I'll give. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you know, God says bring your tithes and offerings to the church. And we say, I, I don't want to do that, Lord. But he says, you bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse that there may be me in my house and prove me now here with saith the Lord. If I will open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing you'll not be able to receive. And suddenly I say, God said it. All right, I'll do that. That's good. You see, God's word has the power to encourage me to prove the sincerity of my love. It has the power to encourage me to grow and, and to be challenged by, uh, by what he's telling me to do, to, to obey, even if I don't understand it, just to do what God tells me to do. It has the power to encourage me that. You see, Solomon said here, he says, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment in verse number two. You may say, well, Brother Smith, I don't know what's the best course of action for me to take in a matter. Well, I counsel thee today to keep the king's commandment. You say, I'll get in trouble and it'll cost me something if I do what God's telling me to do. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment. I could lose a friend or I might lose a position or I, I, I might get off track to what I was really planning on doing. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment. When God speaks to your heart, as Solomon said, be not hasty to go out of his sight. Don't say, well, God told me to do it, but I'm going to put it off. Don't say, God told me to do it, but not right now. Uh, God told me to do it, but I, I'm struggling and I'm wrestling with this matter. And, and I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Let me ask you a question. Does not one breach of his promise that you do not keep, does that not make you and I a traitor? Would one, one leak in a ship cause it to sink? And when God says for us to do such and such thing, we must follow the counsel of our king where the word of a king is, there's power to say, okay, you told me to do it. I've got to do it. I may not understand it, but I'm going to obey God. You see, the Bible has the power to encourage me to obey God. The Bible says here, he says, go not out of his sight. And, and sometimes we may think that, well, I'll just quit listening to God or I'll quit going to church and I'll kind of get over here and I'll hide myself and I'll get away with this and I don't have to do that. Let me tell you something. Study old Jonah if you can get away from God when he's speaking to your heart about doing something. While he'll follow you to the bottom of that ship and he'll follow you to the bottom of that ocean. He'll follow you in the bottom of that whale. To get you to the place that you'll do whatever God tells you to do. And the story of Jonah proves to us that even a whale can't stand a backslidden preacher. He's got to vomit him up. And God will put you in the whale Bible Institute and teach you a few things over the years. And you'll say, I ain't going to do what God's telling me to do. Oh, you better, you better reconsider what you're thinking there now. Because God's word has the power to encourage me. I got to obey God. My family might not understand it, but God can do what God tells me to do. I remember when Dee and I began to sell everything. We, we were going to sell and buy some motorhome, motor hit the road. A couple of my kids said, Dad, I think we need to start talking about the nursing home. <laughs> because everything was stable and all of a sudden and we turned the world upside down. But you know what? When God says do it, just do what God tells you to do. He has the power to encourage you to obey and he'll be a bless you and he'll be behind you. Stand not, as Solomon said here, in an evil thing. Because God has the power to stop you. You say, well, I'm going to just do what I want to do. Well, let me tell you something. God has the power to stop you from doing what you're going to do. Oh, obey God. Just do what the Lord tells you to do. Sometimes he's spoken to me about giving something. Sometimes he's spoken to me about witnessing to somebody. Sometimes he's spoken to me about doing something that I never dreamed he would want me to do. But I found it in his word and I found him to be true. And all the promises of God are in him. Amen. And they, amen to the glory of God. He's given me exceeding great and precious promises that by these I might be partakers of his divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Just do what God says to the stars fall and God will bless you. Has a power to encourage me to obey God. 
has the power to ensure my confidence. Because not only am I, and I know I'm just speaking to me, so you don't stare at me like you at the zoo. That'd be all right. And, but, but I don't always want to do what God wants me to do. And, and uh, I'm not always, you know, always confident that it's all right, going to be all right. And sometimes I find I need mercy. And God's Word has the power to ensure me to have confidence. And sometimes I mess up. And I fumble on third and ten. And I make a mess of something. And uh, I fail. But the Lord says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord. And he <laughs> will abundantly pardon. <laughs> There's some times that I need the mercy of God more than I need anything. Boy, I need grace to keep me going. But you know what? I need, I need God to be merciful to me. <laughs> Man, I'm a, I'm a Christian and I'm a preacher and I'm saved, but I mess up and I sin. And I want to remind you here this morning that the mercies of the Lord endureth forever. I want to remind you this morning that His mercies are renewed every morning. I want to remind you today and say a hearty hallelujah to it that I may say I've done something too awful to mention. I'm too embarrassed to talk about it. But if I throw, my, throw myself on the mercy seat of God and beg for mercy, guess what I find? I find mercy and grace to help me in time of need. Where do you get that, Brother Smith? I get it from the Bible. For the Bible tells me that God's a mercy. Of God. You listen to the red letter words of Jesus. He that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast him out. And sometime I was shame if I had to go to God and say, Oh God, this is what I've done. Oh God, this is what's happened. Oh God, will you once again be merciful to me and don't give me? And God says, I love you. I forgive you. I wash you. Let's start anew. Has the power to encourage me. <laughs> With his mercy, hallelujah, the confidence again, bless God, I can get up and go. Has the power when I need mending, because sometimes I need mending. I've been hurt a few times. Then I've taken a few torpedoes over the years. Every now and then a Baptist will chew you up and spit you out. I'll gnash on you upon your, on your, upon your neck. And boy, they'll stab you and hurt you and wound you. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you need some mending. Nobody knows about that secret pain right now that you've got. Nobody knows about what's going on in your house. You'd like to put it on the prayer line. You'd like to get a prayer request about it, but it's kind of like the old Spanish proverb, every home has its hush. Just don't talk about that. Maybe it's incest or rape or abuse Something's left you shipwrecked. You're floundering once again just to try to find some sort of existence, even as a Christian. And your heart is so broken. Oh, would you hear the words of our master that says, Come unto me, all you that are weak and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly. You say, Brother Smith, that has such, such, such comfort. Where does it come from? It comes from the Bible has the power to encourage me uh, when I need mending, when I get sick or when I get weak or when I need help. He's there to, to mend my old broken heart. Listen, no Baptist has ever mend my broken heart. Nobody's ever got, it's only the Lord's Holy Spirit has the ability to touch you with the balm of Gilead and touch you with the strength that gets you up and gets you going again. Maybe this morning as I speak, I'm reading your mail right now as I speak right now. In these old-fashioned altars in just a minute will there be a call for you to come and find what Jesus can do in your life if you just tell it all to Jesus. Today you'll find mending has the power to help me when I need motivating because all, I don't always need, <laughs> want to feel too motivated. Like this morning when I got up, my bed was Velcroed to my back. And uh, I wake up and I mean, well, I still think like a young whippersnapper, but my body says, you ain't no young whippersnapper. And we're not going to act like that young whippersnapper. Uh, you know, I, when I was a kid preacher, I used to run around, pre run around all, everyone preach. And I realized when I got fat, boy, I can stay right here and say the same thing in one place. <laughs> Sometimes I need motivating where the word of a king is. There's power to motivate you. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When I don't think I can make it, his grace is sufficient for me. 
when I say, well, I, 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 the devil's he's getting the best of me, but I remember, hey, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I, I, when I think nobody loves me, I'm reminded that, hey, nothing shall ever be able to separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I look at the word of God and it says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against God. What is it that I need when I don't have any power and I need some motivation to get me going again? Get myself in the Word of God and it'll fill my tanks up again and give me the power to be motivated to do something for God. It has the power to ensure my confidence. And I feel like I can charge hell with a squirt gun. And I feel young and youthful again, though I may not be. That's his word has the power to do that. Amen. May I say lastly this morning has the power to enable my efforts. Because sometimes even when I get in the mode and I say I'm going to do this, it's going to happen. Then my efforts fail me. And I wonder, why didn't I succeed at that? In my personal life, where the word of a king is, there's power, you see. I remember when I was a young man and I tried to conquer the drug habit and tried to get away from the three packs of cigarettes every day right after I got saved. And I wondered, how can I have power to overcome this? And I read, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. You see, in your personal life, the Word has power uh, uh, to help you in your Christian life. His Word is a lamp unto your feet. It is a light unto your path. Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. I did esteem thy words more than my necessary food. I, I realize that I can't make it without the Word of God in my life. Oh, friend, I understand what it means to need money. I know what it means to need some influence and to maybe have your mind in something. But what we need many times is not money, mind, or influence. What we may need is the word of a king in our life. And it'll give us the power to endure. And I want to remind you that spiritual work can only be done with spiritual power. For it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And you may be trying to do something in your own power. And friend, you can't do it in your, pers your personal life. It's powerless because you don't have the word of a king in it. You keep close to God's word. Guess what happens? His power stays close to you. To diminish his word in your life, his power will be diminished in your personal life. You see, you need the word of a king in, in there. And in the pulpit, man, I tell you what. Man, I travel around and so many guys just aren't preaching the Bible the way, way the Bible ought to be preached. And more when it comes to this Bible being preached, this is an old black book God's given us that's preserved. But I got to make sure that, man, I'm leather long that I reach down deep in my, my gut and I pull out what God has said. Because God has manifested his word through preaching. And God's chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe. And we want to we want to milk toast it down and water it down and tickle a few ears. When, when Jeremiah said, I stamp with the foot and smite with the fist and cry aloud and spare not, said Isaiah, and rear back and preach God's word. And when God's words cried aloud and it's spoken aloud and it's some noise comes from it and some energy is put behind it. Guess what? God says the word of the king is there's power in the pulpit. Boy, it's what we need today. One man years ago in the 1800s had heard how powerful D.L. Moody was. And he wanted to go hear Moody preach. <laughs> but he was lost and he wanted to ridicule him. He was a physician. And he told everybody, I'm going to go pick Moody's language apart. And I'm going to come back and tell you how, just, how stupid this preacher is. And he got up there and he heard Moody preaching. And he got under conviction. And he came forward and he was saved that night under Moody's preaching. And he went back to his workplace and they said, I thought she was going to pick apart Moody's preaching. And he says, all I can do, say is there he stood behind that Bible and behind that pulpit. And he just fired one shot after another and it went straight to my heart like bullets. And all I can tell you about Moody is the power uh, in the way that he spoke. He had the Bible on the tip of his tongue and it came out like fire and I could not withstand it. It's not my word like a hammer, God says. It's not my word like a fire that breaketh the bones. God says, my word is able. Oh, and what do we need in America today? We don't need to tone down our pulpits. We need to rear back and let some preaching come forth from the pulpits. Because where the word of a king is, is power. And in my prayer life, you see, the Bible teaches me, if, if his words abide in me, 
and I abide in him, I, I can ask what I will, and it shall be done unto me. Uh, you have not because you ask not. And the Bible says clearly, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. A lot of times the reason we don't get our prayers answered is because we're not in his word. And his word's not in us. And we don't know what to claim and we don't know what to ask for. I'm not promoting a name it, claim it by any means. But if God gives you some promise in the word of God and tells you to get a hold of it and you stand on it, you stand on the promise, you'll watch God work in your prayer life. And I want to stand here this morning. I'm not going to say a lot about it, about, about praying. I should probably preach a whole message on it, but I'm not the prayer man, a man of prayer that I need to be. I'd like to be a better prayer warrior. But I do know this, when your word, his word's abiding in you, you ask anything you want. And if you're doing God's will, he'll help you out. Let me close and be very candid with a situation that happened to my wife and I. We joined this team in what we're doing last year and as we embarked upon it, we bought us this motor home. We moved by faith from Texas to Florida. And you go from a salary to no salary. We're raising support, just like missionaries trying to seek to do what we're doing. Bought this big Leviathan called a motor home. It's about 40 foot long, and it gets about six miles a gallon. Praise God. And uh, we, were in the, we were in the panhandle of Florida in my first meeting. Boy, I tell you, this is great strategy on my part. Talk about logistics. Here I am in the panhandle of Florida, and I book our first meeting about an hour of uh, Miami, Florida, uh, in a place called Fort Pierce at uh, Riverview Baptist Church. <clears throat> we got ready to go, and we only had so much money. And I told my wife, I said, babe, I'm going to fill this thing up, and with what money I've got and what's in the tank, if I got the mileage feel figured right, we should be able to maybe make it there. And uh, she said, well, let's just go at it. And here we were like little kids again. We've been so used to owning houses and, you know, stuff like that. And now broke and nothing, you know, and not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring in anything. But, man, we're launching out by faith. I told Dee, I said, we got to pray nothing happens in this motorhome as we go, because if it does, we're stuck. We'll have to call for some help. And I don't know, I'm a Mississippi boy. I don't know anybody from Florida except my pastor. I did sure didn't want to get on the road and call them first trip out. <clears throat> and so I planned for, I got I was online scheduled a place to stop in Gainesville that first night. That's about halfway. Florida's a big state. Big old panhandle across and a long way down. It's going to be a two-day journey down there, basically. And uh, we got down to Gainesville where I was about halfway, where I was supposed to have my uh, place to stay that night. And it was about dark. And the guy came out and he said, well, Brother Smith, he said, I'm sorry. I know you're going to come. He says, it's getting late. I rented your place out to somebody else. He said, I don't have any more places. We're, we're full. Well, you just don't park that in somebody's front yard. You know, it's pretty big. We pull a car behind it. And so uh, on the Burger King parking lot. So I, I had to drive about an hour or so to find a church to plug it up to. And when I did, I used about a half tank of diesel that I didn't plan on using. Well, with that, that means money. So I get up next morning. I tell Dee, I say, honey, let me tell you something. Can't nothing happen today. Because if it does, we are in big trouble. Let's just pray nothing, nothing happens. And so we got on the interstate. We've been on the interstate just a few minutes on I-75 going down the heart of Florida. And there's a traffic jam. There had been a car wreck. Some people been killed. And, and, and I'm not preaching now. I'm telling you the truth, okay? And uh, we're sitting there in the interstate. And I pull, my, uh, I pull the air brakes. And we sat in a parking lot for three and a half hours on the interstate. We just sat there. We're not moving, and it's hot, and we're in deep Florida. And I'm watching that tank's hand just go more and more and more. And Dee, Dee said, what are we going to do? And I said, well, let's do like we used to. Remember when we was in Bible college years ago, and we had to pray for a sandwich and prayed for just getting my shoes resold, you know. And I said, we prayed for years about other things. I said, baby, we got to have something. So right there in the middle of I-75, Cars stacked up in three different lanes. I bowed my head and I said, Lord, I'm supposed to be done better by my wife at this age in life. But I'm broke and I ain't got any money. And God, I know you've called us to do this. And we're trying our best to get to Miami. And unless you intervene, we're not going to make it. God, I don't know anybody where I'm at. And this is the strangest place, but in the middle of this interstate, I'm asking you to give me $100. That's all I asked for, just to get us there. 
Because we get there, I know Bart Leonard, the pastor of the church, every year they'll take care of us, maybe he'll take us home for support. And uh, we finish praying, sit there about 30 minutes and no movement or anything. All of a sudden, my wife looks down and she said, there's a lady beside us in the car and she's, she's waving her hands and she's crying. And I, and I, look, I sit up, stood up and I looked and sure enough, there's a lady, she's got these diamond rings on. She's in a Lexus car. Not the kind of person to be pulling somebody like wanting to get our attention unless we hit her, <laughs> you know. And, and she's waving and crying. And Dee says, what do I do? I said, well, let's open the door, see what she wants. And Dee opened the door and the lady goes, if you'll let me use your restroom, I'll give you $100. <laughs> You see, we got a restroom on the motorhome. <laughs> I said, well, come on in here. And man, she's right in the middle of the interstate. Her car parked, my, my Leviathan parked in this big old thing. She bolted in here. I wouldn't say hello. She went past me, went straight to that bathroom back there. Man, she was back there a couple minutes. And he said, there's a hundred dollars right there. And she comes out. She said, here's your hundred dollars. I said, ma'am, we can't take your hundred dollars. She goes, oh, I've been praying. I'm going for an ultrasound. I've been drinking all this juice and stuff. And I'm so embarrassed. I couldn't use a bathroom right here in the middle of the interstate. All these people around. And I was praying, God, please let me find somebody to give me a bathroom. And I'll give them a hundred dollars. <laughs> And I said, ma'am, we've all been there. We can't take you $100. We understand. And she said, oh, please do. And she was an independent Baptist, went to Lakeview Baptist Church in Lake City, Florida. I think that's the name of the place. And, and anyway, she took our car and she said, well, God bless you. God bless you. She went out the door. My wife goes, there went $100. We didn't take it. And I said, yeah, babe, I know. I, I don't know what. I said, we know what it's like. She said, yeah, I do. And, but anyway, God showed us that if he wanted us to have $100, he could call somebody to have to use the bathroom to get us $100. <laughs> that encouraged me a little bit, but I still didn't have $100. And I was still broke and I still needed diesel. Well, we drive about an hour or so and somebody hacked my credit card a couple years ago. So I'm real bad about in the course of a day checking two or three times my balance. And I didn't check it two or three times that day and it was zero. And I guess I wanted to see it see, say zero again. So I pulled it up, still said zero. And... So we're driving on. They said, how are we going to make it? I said, honey, I'm down to $8. I don't know how in the world we're going to make it, baby. And uh, I said, but God's told us to do this. And here we go. And about 30 minutes later, while I'm driving, I got my phone. I hit my app and it comes up. And somebody had deposited $1,000 into my account. $1,000. <laughs> That'll make a Baptist shout. <laughs> I called our home church. I said, what in the world's going on? Y'all playing tricks with me? And they said, no, we don't know anything about it. Somebody called a couple of days ago and asked how to put money in your account. We told them, and I guess they did. I said, yeah, they did. Hallelujah. And I went from having eight, $8 that morning at lunch to that night. I was sitting in Applebee's eating ribs, bless God. I was enjoying that $1,000 with a full tank of gas, might I add. And we went on down to Riverview, Florida. They took us on for support, fed this fat Baptist preacher and got us on up the road, went to another church in Eustis, Florida. They took us on for support and we cruised back into our home church. Thought like we'd slayed hell itself. I go to the mailbox and pull out a card in the mailbox. And it was from the Lake View Friendship Baptist Church or whatever it is there. Over 90 people had signed a card thanking us for letting one of their choicest church members use the bathroom in the middle of I-75. <laughs> That's not the end of it. But under that was another card. And in that other card was, it was a card from Carrie, I can't remember her last name, and her husband that we had let use the restroom. And she said, yeah, I cannot tell you how much I've used this as a witness and tool about how God will answer your prayer. It's been such a delight to know that God heard my prayer with y'all being parked there. And I knew you wouldn't take the $100, so here's the $100 you wouldn't take. And she put $100 in the card. <laughs> well, Glory. Well, I say all that to try to encourage you this morning where the word of a king is, there's power. And whenever you ask anything according to his will, listen, it ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about his word. And God wants his word printed and God wants people to have his word. And God wants you to use his word. And that's our God. He's a good God. And where the word of a king is, there's power. Heavenly Father. Thank you for the liberty I've had this morning to preach. I even went a little longer than I thought I needed to, but forgive me for that. Father, please bless this word that's been preached today. And I know, God, I've seen so many, and so many people can tell stories like this. Uh, but how often we've seen you just do the miraculous. And, and even so, more, Lord, now that we're having such close affiliations with the printing of the word of God. 
the devil, new levels, new devils. The devil, is, he works so much against it. But God, you're so big. And maybe somebody this morning needs some faith and they need some encouraging. And maybe somebody right here this morning, they're just about ready to give up. And this morning, if they'd just come and, and trust your word and, and lean on you and find strength to get on out of here, they'd be helped here today. And Lord, I pray you'll use everything that's been said without re-preaching. I'll leave it with the preacher to use wisdom to guide this flock in Jesus' name. Amen. Linda, if you'll come, let's stand if you would, please. This morning, if the Lord spoke to your heart through the message, we encourage you to come. Thank God for the word of God. Thank God for the power that's in his word. Sister Linda begins to play. You need to come for any reason. If you're here this morning and you're lost, you're not 100% sure that you'd go to heaven today if you'd pass from this life into everlasting. Whether it be heaven, whether it be hell, if you're not exactly sure you'd go to heaven tonight or this morning, you need to come to this altar. If there's a need in your life, it can be met today through the Lord Jesus Christ. I appreciate the message. Appreciate the challenge. Appreciate the illustration how that God supplies the need. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. We don't, hey, we serve a big God. We don't serve a God that's in a box. He goes outside the box. Some are at the altar. Others are coming. Still folk are coming. If you have a need, if you have a burden, just make your way down to the altar. We'll be going home here in a few moments. Once you get something that will help you and take you home. Get something to help you, take you home and bring you back tonight. Amen. We all need help. We all need prayer. We all need, hey, we all need the word of God. While these are praying, anyone else need to come? Great message this morning. I appreciate that so much. The king's word, there's power. There's power in his word. Just allow the Lord to work in your life. Allow him to bless you as he wants to. like seeing tears on the altar, folks. I like to see people get up and tears, stains on the altar. Still got one left at the altar. You pray for that person. dismissed and this will finish at the altar so just be patient if you would please
Well, I appreciate you being here this morning. It's been a real blessing. Been in the Lord's house. Appreciate the good spirit that we had this morning. Thank the Lord for those that came to the altar. Hope pray you got some help. Would you pray for Brother Tony and his wife Dee as they be traveling and going around. Lord, build a hedge around them and protect them. And uh, we're going to be dismissed. Hope you plan to come back tonight at 6 o'clock. Be sure to come. Don't forget the choir practice at uh, quarter to 5. Those of you who's in the choir, please come if you can. And hope and pray that you'll be able to be back with us tonight. Let's be dismissed and pray for the requests and pray for each other. And pray the Lord's will be done in all of our lives. Let's bow our heads. Brother Marvin.